What kind of lizards do you have in here, John? It's a design for the southwestern desert, and so there's a thing called a collared lizard, and then a thing called a horn lizard, which some people call horny toads because they're round yes. and fat like a toad. TCU. And then this is the view from your kitchen window, which is yeah. about as nice of a view as you could possibly have. I don't like washing dishes, but it's a little easier now. Welcome to living the aquascape lifestyle. Good morning. Everybody that drives by your house knows what kind of person you are. <laughs> how, you, fossil. How, <laughs> how you doing, John? Good, good. We are back. What part of Florida are we in? Elkton, Florida. Elkton? Yeah. Okay. See, I find out when you guys are too. I have been here three or four times now, but this is John Brugan, the director of the St. August, the famous St. Augustine Alligator Farm. And we got Jason from Earthworks, who was the guy that basically spearheaded this project. And we did this January of last year. This year, and it was cold then, and it's cold this morning. So these Florida boys don't know what cold is. This is perfect. This is in the 60s. This is fantastic fall weather. I'm not sure when this vlog is coming out, but this was a training day that we organized for an aquascape event. Basically, this is your first year having your water feature, and you're in for a real treat because this water feature is in a lanai or a screened-in room, but we didn't just screen it in to get rid of the mosquitoes. We screened it in for... To keep the lizards in, actually. To keep the lizards in. <laughs> Check out another beautiful beautiful aquascape water feature. Say hello to Ricky Bobby. Hey, I'm Ricky Bobby. Hey, first, you're last. <laughs> hey, what's up, Ricky Bobby? <laughs> Talk about how this all started over here. Started because of COVID and we're all stuck inside and not doing much. We, Jen and I usually travel internationally at least once a year and in around the country a couple times a year. And we didn't do any of that for right. a year. So we sat around talking about what we could be doing here to make life more enjoyable. We've had this property for the 10 years. I've always had this impression that there should be a pool back here. I've always had water features in my life, but this is an old canoe here that- Very uh, creative. Full and it's got <laughs> fish, and there's usually a couple water snakes in there that are either eating the fish or eating the pellet. Welcome to Nature Florida. And then, did you build this? And then this was a concept of mine. We like the desert Southwest, and so I wanted kind of this adobe feel, but it's a 20 foot across uh, koi and lily pond. This started when I didn't want the canoe at work anymore. <laughs> I feel like it was safe. This is just a brainchild that I've been drawing on for a while, and it, and it finally got started. Well, it is gorgeous. And so you got koi in here, huh? Yeah, there's a couple koi, goldfish, oh, yeah. some mosquito fish, a couple uh, plecostomus, some giant snails. I would love to see some tropical lilies in here because it's such a big body of water, uh -huh. you know, and you can see your, just, your homemade filter system. Yeah. What is this right here? Something I use when we're fossil hunting. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I would not have guessed that. Yeah. So oh, I see. It's a screen. And I had been keeping some plants. I didn't want the fish to eat. Anymore. Right. And so the algae just kind of grew in yeah. there. I was wondering if it was some sort of a science experiment. Yeah. So it's a fossil hunting thing that's floating in your pond right now to <laughs> prevent the fish from eating the plants. The baby plants. <laughs> oh, what's what's this right here? I never even remember that one. Uh, it's just another body of water. That's for the duck to get in. So the <laughs> duck can actually completely bathe and do, do all Do you only have one duck? Yeah, we had two and they were both males and they... Yeah. Fought. fought a lot but so this is how this hobby starts That's you know right. you put something like this in for a duck and then you build in a big upper one you do a canoe and then eventually you get an aquascape recreation pond exactly <laughs> then you start doing stuff like this miracle oh my gosh it's just so awesome 
You see why I say I love my job? I get to come back and visit cool people with amazing water features. And here is the anniversary girl, huh? Happy anniversary. <laughs> How you doing, Jen? Good. Good to see ya. <laughs> Thanks for waking up early for me this morning. It and was tough. Don't you love this beautiful fall weather? I love it. See? She likes it. She's a fall girl. <laughs> I'm totally a fall girl. <laughs> wow, it is looking terrific. Oh, we got coffee, huh? Yeah. Is, is this the ritual? Come out here in the morning and have a cup of coffee? Good morning. So there's my French press coffee, my pumpkin spice. And then this is the view from your kitchen window, which is yeah. about as nice of a view as you could possibly have. I don't like washing dishes, but it's a little easier now. <laughs> so how would you describe, Jen, what living the aquascape lifestyle is all about? So this is now an extension of our living space mm -hmm. because... I go out there every morning to have my coffee. And it also is an investment in self-care mm -hmm. because I can just decompress. You know, that not only is it like a noise canceling, but it's just the peacefulness of being out on the water. I hear John likes to swim in there in the mornings. Yes. <laughs> He might swim like two or three times a day in there. I'm a marathon runner, so I actually will just decompress in there after a really long run. The cool water really helps to recover my legs. So it was the the craziness that went on last January was worth it, huh? So worth it. Yes, absolutely. Describe the build upon day that happened in your yard. I'll say when I would come out to this view and I'd see the chaos and I'm making my coffee. I might have put a little bourbon in it right in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the people were so nice. So that alleviated all my fears of all these like rust and tumble guys that, you know, just yep. put it on the ground. But no, everybody was so nice. There wasn't any trash. You know, everyone's picking up after themselves. And the end result is <laughs> the so result worth it. It's so amazing and breathtaking. So, John, are you and Jen, 10 year anniversary, are you guys equally yoked by having a blood, is it a blood python? Mm -hmm. Blood python in your kitchen. This is her snake. This is her snake. This is her In the reptile world, a lot of boyfriends give their ladies snakes or lizards and tortoises. And so that's what a lot of my collection is. Wait, so a boy gave you this? Yeah. Before John? Yeah. What kind of lizards do you have in here, John? It's a design for the southwestern desert, and so there's a thing called a collared lizard, which is uh, maybe up to 18 inches, and they have a black ring around their neck. They're insect eaters. And then a thing called a horn lizard, which some people call horny toads because they're round yes. and fat like a toad. TCU. So how has this habitat been for your animals? It's great. So it's a little bit chilly morning, so they're not going to be up today, but there's rock crevices and, and spots that they can go. And sometimes there's uh, seven animals that live out here, seven lizards that live out here, and they can kind of go. And sometimes we don't see them for weeks on end. They can get their own food and uh, hunt and whatever. But then if they get hungry and haven't found enough to eat, they'll pop up and come to us. And a few of the lizards eat crickets right out of our hands done exactly what we wanted to do. Now this winter, they're gonna go underground. We won't see them for probably three months until it warms back up. So we have the archers. The archer fish. Yes, yeah, so I can sit here and sip my coffee and watch them 
spit up at the rocks. Trying to knock off insects and stuff. Insects, snail it, anything that's moving. Oh, yeah. It's that's really cool. And because they're tropical fish and the water's 75, which is fine right now, but you're going to actually put a heater in. Yeah, absolutely. So that you don't have to shrink when you jump in in the morning in your birthday suit. <laughs> There's the heater and there's the inline pumps because it's a recreation pond. The heater will go in and then this pond will be usable 365 days out of the year. So this is very unusual for people to see a lanai in Florida or anywhere for that matter with a pond in it instead of a pool. But for me, this is the actual perfect application for a fun loving couple like this that are into nature, that don't have any kids, that just want to be able to enjoy living the aquascape lifestyle down here in Florida. So many times, almost all the time, the paradigm is you have to have a swimming pool in a lanai, but here he has lizards. I mean, how many people would build an entire recreation pond primarily for their lizards? But look at how incredible this place is. This is why I do these vlogs, to inspire people to live the aquascape lifestyle, to think creatively, to think outside the box. I have the coolest friends. I get to meet the coolest people through my job and getting to travel and see them. The fact that this was a build a pond day, we teach people how to become certified aquascape contractors and build these kinds of things for people. This is why I have my channel to inspire people to live the aquascape lifestyle. If you're interested in living the aquascape lifestyle, check out the link below to find a certified aquascape contractor by you. Check out the link below to find Team Aquascape to see how we actually build these things and get into this industry, get into this hobby, get into this passion. This is why I do what I do. I love my job. Thank you.